Hi, this is Charlie Zeese with Stargate Pyramids and the Pyramid Science Foundation. Uh, today I'm going to be doing part three of the series that I've started on uh, the geometric relationships between the progression of the platonic solids and the Stargate Pyramids. For those of you who have not seen the two previous videos, they are uh, important uh, as background. So I'm going to uh, put the links to the first two uh, parts of this into the comments section of this video. But the purpose of today's, it's just going to be a short video to begin with. Uh, since I published part two, I have ascertained a number of additional geometric relationships that weren't immediately obvious even to me when I was doing uh, the 3D plotting of the Lawler diagram that we discussed in uh, part two. So what I'm going to do today is to go over those additional relationships. Some people uh, contacted me after uh, part two and, 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 you know, we're not totally uh, convinced and rightfully so that uh, the, the one example that I had uh, about the 3D relationships that showed up was sufficient to really demonstrate that this wasn't just an accident. So I wanted to show you that information. I actually put this together last week before I went on uh, Richard Hoagland's Other Side of Midnight. So it's really information that I was able to glean from that diagram after I did this first video. So anyway, I'm going to open up now and we can, uh, you know, begin discussion of uh, these additional relationships. So again, this is part three um, of this uh, uh, series on the geometric links between Russian pyramids and the platonic solids. So just by way of quick review, uh, this was a, a diagram that I put up before in part two that showed the uh, nine spheres from the Lawler diagram plotted in three dimensions inside the Russian geometry pyramid. And uh, just as a brief review, both the uh, bottom sphere and the very top sphere in this diagram are from the icosahedron, uh, which um, it kind of works as middle or C or uh, the, the, the demarcation of the octave of this, uh, of this progression. So uh, you can see that everything fits nicely within, uh, within that pyramid. But again, one viewer uh, actually, uh, more than one commented that, uh, you know, that could theoretically happen uh, with any number of, of different geometries. Uh, so I wanted to go through and show you some more examples that would demonstrate that it is unique to this geometry. So uh, I had demonstrated uh, in the previous video, if you'll look at the green uh, boxes, that um, uh, there was a this unique coincidence, uh, and it's more than a coincidence, of the uh, apex of the interior sphere of the dodecahedron uh, matching up perfectly in, in, in three dimensions with the base of the circumscribing sphere of the octahedron. And you see those two here in, in green, 4.352. Well, one that quite honestly I missed uh, when I was doing this before was a second set, uh, which is shown now in blue, and that is uh, 3.820 which is the apex of the interior sphere of the icosahedron uh, matches up with the midpoint of the interior sphere of the cube and tetrahedron. So uh, not only do we have one example now, but we have two uh, that match up perfectly. And that can only happen in this specific uh, geometric pattern. And, and I'll try to show you a visualization of why that's the case here in a few minutes. But just suffice it to say that these two points now are, are confirmations. But I want to show you uh, some more interesting um, uh, ratios that I found. And once again, uh, when I started looking at the various uh, apex, base, and midpoints of these nine spheres in uh, Lawler's uh, diagram. And as I mentioned here, like the ones on the previous page, these relationships could not exist in a geometry other than the 76.345 degree slant angle dimensions of the Taurus phi scaling angle in Russian pyramid. So uh, once again, I've, I've got five examples, five new examples 
uh, as well demonstrating uh, these relationships. So the first one, uh, the apex of the interior sphere of the dodecahedron uh, divided by the apex of the circumscribing sphere of the icosahedron equals 1.414 or the square root of 2. Uh, the second one, the base of the circumscribing sphere of the smaller icosahedron and divided by the apex of the circumscribing sphere of the larger icosahedron equals 2. Uh, similarly, the base of the circumscribing sphere of the smaller icosahedron divided by the base of the circumscribing sphere of the octahedron equals, once again, 1.414 or the square root of 2. Uh, the next one, the base of the circumscribing sphere of the octahedron uh, divided by the midpoint of the interior sphere of the icosahedron uh, equals 1.732, which is actually the square root of 3. And then finally, uh, the apex of the interior sphere of the octahedron divided by the midpoint of the circumscribing sphere of the octahedron is equal to 1.272 or the square root of 5. And again, if you want to come back and look at these in real time, all you have to do is to uh, come back to uh, this table on this page and you can do those uh, mathematical calculations for yourself. So what we found here are seven unique geometric both proportions and perfectly matching midpoints uh, and apices from the, from the previous diagram, none of which could have happened in any geometry other than the 76.345 degree slant angle that's found in the Russian pyramid in the Taurus. Now finally, this is, uh, this is not a scientific proof, but what I did do was I tried to uh, demonstrate why this is so, and I took a Giza pyramid as an example. Uh, I took on in the left-hand side, I, I, I actually used the same base uh, length as we had in the previous uh, diagrams with the uh, Russian pyramid and built a, um, a Giza pyramid uh, with that base dimension. And as you can see, even though the smaller sphere uh, doesn't even fit inside. So uh, that's not an appropriate way to view it, nor is really uh, the one on the right. I took the same uh, idea, but I put the, the first sphere inside uh, of uh, our built a larger Giza pyramid to, to fit the sphere inside the pyramid. And although I kept the, uh, the um, spheres in the same position as they were diagrammed, you can see that if we were to try to fit all these inside the pyramid, that there's no way that any of these vertical dimensions would fit uh, inside of uh, those spheres being stuffed inside of a, of a Giza pyramid. So uh, they would theoretically fit, but they'd all be stacked basically on top of each other, and those relationships would be lost. So uh, I think this is great additional information to demonstrate that this is not an accident, that in fact uh, this ancient diagram did presume and, and, and was meant to, to demonstrate that the progression of the, of the um, uh, platonic solids does occur within the geometry of the torus in the Russian pyramid. So I hope this has been helpful. I will continue to do additional updates on this topic as uh, my research continues. As always, we thank you for watching, and you have a great day. Hi, I want to thank all of you who are uh, active participants and listen to uh, the research videos that I've been doing over the last few years. It's really uh, a joy for me to be able to uh, do this in-depth in uh, scientific research and find these uh, wonderful new connections uh, with the Russian geometry pyramids and the cutting edge science that's going on in the world around us today. Uh, to help me continue that process, and to continue the research work that we're uh, beginning at the Pyramid Science Foundation, uh, we would appreciate any and all contributions uh, to our effort. 
If you go to pyramidsciencefoundation.org, uh, please hit the contribute button at the bottom uh, and make your donation. Uh, it's much appreciated and tax deductible. And also the way that I continue to, uh, uh, to make money while I uh, do this research and uh, begin the process of compiling all of this into uh, my upcoming book is through the sale of my pyramids. So uh, we also appreciate any and all uh, uh, purchases of our pyramids. Uh, Caduceus coils, Lisa's uh, work as well uh, is available on stargatepyramids.com. There you can buy uh, the pyramids, Caduceus coils and uh, capstones that the two of us provide. So once again, we thank you for watching and you have a great day.